Have you ever wondered how a country can go from one of the poorest in Europe to one of the richest in the world in just a few decades? Welcome to Ireland, a nation that defies expectations. But behind this facade of prosperity, there is a darker story. But as with any story, there is a dark side. Despite its apparent wealth, 70% of young Irish people are considering leaving the country, dissatisfied with the economic situation. How is this possible in such a wealthy country? To understand a bit of context about Ireland's challenges, we need to know that for most of its history, Ireland had exactly the opposite reputation to what it has today. Both as part of the United Kingdom and after becoming independent, it was a poor country, with a predominantly agricultural and underdeveloped economy, dependent on trade with the UK. There was a strong tradition of people trying to escape poverty by leaving the country, which also didn't help the economy. And things didn't improve much over time. In the late 1980s, Ireland was still one of the poorest countries in Western Europe. At that time, Ireland was a member of the European Union, a bloc of countries that share a single market, where a company can sell to all member states but only needs to pay taxes in one of them. Ireland bet this was the best way to transform its economy, becoming a hub where all foreign companies coming to do business in the EU would have their official residence, allowing Ireland to collect a small share of their European profits. To do this, Ireland introduced a combination of low taxes and economic subsidies, and soon after, the bet began to pay off. Major U.S. companies like Dell, Microsoft and others began choosing Ireland as their official European residence, not because it would be an important market, but because they saved a lot of money on taxes. The taxes that Ireland managed to collect powered a boom the Irish economy had never seen before. In the 1990s and 2000s, it was growing as fast as economies like Singapore or South Korea and became known as the Celtic Tiger. In 2008, Ireland was hit hard by the global economic crisis, and the Irish response was to double down on this strategy. The low taxes became almost nil, and Ireland basically became a global tax haven. It was no longer just a European tax haven. The conditions were so good that many U.S. companies started routing all their global profits entirely through Ireland, where they paid almost nothing and Ireland still got a small slice of a huge pie. It emerged from the crisis as a Celtic phoenix, growing faster than ever and overtaking virtually everyone. Unlike most of its history, Ireland's population was now growing as people were no longer leaving, but many highly paid tech workers were arriving to work at the big tech companies in Ireland. It turns out that last year, a survey showed 7 in 10 Irish people aged 18-24 are considering permanently leaving the country because they are not satisfied with their quality of life. Exposing to the world that despite the great numbers in the economy, Ireland has a huge internal problem. And what would be the reason for such dissatisfaction? The answer lies in Ireland's housing crisis. With government policies that make it difficult to build dense urban housing and facilitate objection to such projects, Ireland faces a critical shortage of dwellings. The situation is so serious that last year only 851 rental properties were listed across the entire 5.1 million people country. But the housing crisis is just one example of a larger problem. Ireland, despite its glowing economic reputation, is a surprisingly poorly managed country, with failures in building basic infrastructure and managing essential public services. For years, Ireland has struggled to build roads and energy infrastructure, and its national health system is in perpetual crisis, constantly overcrowded and underfunded, with its doctors fleeing to other English-speaking countries. So how can Ireland have such a fantastic record on paper, but reality doesn't seem to match up? The explanation may lie in the fact that Ireland is not really as rich as it appears. The theory, recognized by many economists but fiercely contested by the Irish government, is that Ireland's GDP statistics are so inflated that they do not reflect reality. Let's explain this better. 
Of course, Ireland has an extremely high GDP per capita, which is by far the most widely used indicator to measure a country's economic performance. And just by looking at this number alone, it seems the Irish economy is far ahead of all others. Except when we look at the various statistics, things quickly start to look a little strange. For example, Ireland has a fairly high average salary, but it's far from being as high as it should be relative to GDP. The average Irish salary is lower than most Scandinavian countries, and similar to the average salary in countries like the Netherlands, Belgium, or Austria, except that GDP per capita in these countries is only about half of Ireland's. Other statistics show a similar trend. The available household income, which basically measures how much money people actually have available, ranks Ireland 17th, below the EU average. In other words, there is a large gap between the numbers showing how rich Ireland is and how rich people actually are. Ireland is an example of a leprechaun economy, where the country's GDP tells you nothing about the true wealth of the country. The Irish economy is driven primarily by global corporations that move their profits to Ireland, profits that were not made in Ireland, by companies that are not Irish, and that are withdrawn from the country without ever entering the real Irish economy. Ireland is therefore a tale of two countries, a rich one and a poor one. While rich Ireland gets the attention, poor Ireland, depicting the daily reality of most people, stays out of sight. The crackdown on tax havens is intensifying, and Ireland's days of tax harvesting from foreign giants may be coming to an end. If that happens, reality will be revealed, and what comes next will not be pretty. Ireland is an interesting case study on the complexities of economic development and how statistics don't always tell the full story. It's a reminder that we should always look beyond the numbers and examine the realities lived by ordinary people. Ireland's apparent prosperity hides significant social problems, from the lack of affordable housing to the mass emigration of talented youth. Its economic miracle is predicated on large foreign companies taking advantage of the Irish tax system, but contributing little to the country's actual economy. This is a pattern we see in many tax havens around the world, Cayman Islands, Luxembourg, Singapore. They attract foreign wealth and investment with tax incentives, but that wealth rarely trickles down to improve the lives of ordinary citizens. The lesson is that we need to analyze GDP and economic growth numbers with a critical eye. They don't tell the full story. We should also pay attention to inequality, poverty, access to housing, health care, and education. A nation's prosperity should be measured by the quality of life of all its people, not just a few abstract economic indicators. I hope you enjoyed it and found it helpful. If you'd like to see more, please visit our channel and explore our other videos. We value your feedback, so please take a moment to leave a comment, sharing your thoughts and suggesting topics you'd like us to cover in the future. And if you haven't already, consider subscribing to our channel to stay updated with our latest releases. We appreciate your support and look forward to seeing you again.